Hey, Sam, don't you think we ought to move him up the draw and lay low for a while? No, we're going to move him on up to our place. Now, what if someone sees us? You let me worry about that. Where's Billy? <laughs> he chickened out. Don't make jokes with me, sport. No, I'm serious. He cut out back there. Go look for yourself. back here uh, my cinch come loose i just stopped to tighten it yeah well it looks all right now you're gonna stay around here all day no i i was just fixing to mount up hey boy you ain't turning yellow on me are you no what is that The card rights. No, Sam, don't! Let go of that. Let go! Keep after him! They got clean away, Hoff. Didn't even get a chance to get a look at them. Who you got there? Billy Penn. Hank Penn's boy? What's he doing here? I don't know. That's what I'm going to find out. You fellas get those cattle back up the north pasture where they belong. I'll take care of Billy. Stay put, Billy. You got a nasty bump there. Mr. Cartwright, I didn't know what they was going to do, honest. Who were they, Billy? I don't know, Haas. You don't know, or you won't tell me? I can't. I just can't. Look, Billy. Cattle rustling's a mighty serious business. Now, your pa's been a good friend of mine for as long as I can remember. You wouldn't want me taking you over there and telling him what I caught you doing, would you? I can't tell you, Hoss. That's all there is to it. 
Don't you understand? And if he don't quit running around with that bunch of wild yahoos, he's gonna get himself in more trouble. Well, it's better than being a pig farmer. You know what people call us? Hank and Billy Penn, the pig pens. I'd do just about anything to get away from that. Even to covering up for a bunch of rustlers. Well, they ain't pig farmers. Well, come on, son. Looks like you and me got to do a little talking with your pa. I can get up myself. All right. Have it your own way, boy. Come on. Sure ain't gonna make your Paul very happy, Billy. A lot he cares. He don't even know I'm alive. All he cares about is pigs. Howdy, Hank. Boss. Missed you last night, boy. Where you been? Out with some friends. All night? Why not? I ain't a kid anymore, Pa. We got company. You go on inside. We'll talk about this later, as soon as Mr. Cartwright leaves. I got nothing to talk about. I have. I'll get. I'm sorry. Oh, it ain't your fault, Hank. That's just it, Hoss. I think it is. Billy and me, we just don't seem to hit it off no more. I can't talk to him. I can't even control him. He's gone wild as a year, and... I've been sort of hoping he'd grow out of it, you know? Oh, Hank, all boys got a few wild oats they got a soul. I did. Little Joe did. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if little Joe's grown out of it yet. But you know, sometimes it takes more than just growing. Yeah. What do I do? Beat his head in for him? Did that do any good? I don't know. I wish I knew the answer to that, Hank, but I don't. What brings you over here this time of day, Hoss? Hank, on second thought, I think I'll let Billy tell you that. See you, Hank. Well, say hello to your pa for me. There's a piece of pie over there. Mrs. Randall brought pie, if you're hungry. What, does she think we need charity? No. She just figured maybe you were getting tired of my cooking. Where'd you meet up with Horse? Didn't he tell you? No, he said he figured you'd do that. Did you go over there to ask him for a job? No. What makes you think I'd do that? Oh, well, maybe this farm here is getting a little cramped for your size. Uh, maybe you figure that horses and cows are more important to deal with than pigs. Well, ain't they? Son, somebody's got to raise pigs. Well, they're clean, fine stock. And there's always a market for them. You're proud of it, aren't you? Why shouldn't I be? It's honest work. Don't you know what people call us? 
I've been called a lot of things in my lifetime. It don't matter what folks say. Well, it may not matter to you, but it does matter to me. Billy, you forgot your lunch. I ain't hungry no more. And you didn't tell his father about it? No, sir. Well, don't you think you should have? Well, Paul, I started to, but Dad Bernard seemed like old Hank had the weight of the world on his shoulders about that boy, and I, I just didn't want to add to it, that's all. Hoss, I know how difficult it is for Hank without a wife and mother to help guide the family, and I know what he's going through. Every father does when his children start growing up, but if Billy's getting into serious trouble, I think Hank ought to be told about it, don't you? I guess so. Well, what does that mean, I guess so? Well, Paul, I guess I'm looking at it from Billy's viewpoint. If you knew all the trouble that little Joe and me got into when we was growing up, why, you'd have wore yourself out thrashing us. And old Billy's right there at that same stage now, the same age, where everything his pa does is wrong and nobody understands him. And, well, he gets into a lot of trouble, but he don't mean to. You know what I mean? Yes, I think I know what you mean, but cattle rustling is a little more serious than some adolescent prank. Well, now, that's just it, Paul. I ain't for sure he was rustling. He was out there with him, all right. But when I first saw him, when I rode up that hill, he was up there fighting with one of them yahoos. Fighting? Yeah. This other kid had a rifle, and Billy was trying to keep him using it on me. I see. So I figured I owed him something, at least to let him tell his pa about it himself. Yeah. You think he did? <sighs> I hope so, but I doubt it. There, big boy. Doggone it. I'm sorry I've neglected you lately, but it don't seem like there's enough hours in the day. We're gonna win that blue ribbon at the fair. We got a lot of work to do. Hello, Hoss. Howdy, Billy. Ain't you gonna ask me why I'm here? Well, I figured you'd tell me when you got ready. What you doing? Getting old Macho here ready for the fair in Virginia City at the end of the month. Boy, he sure is a good looking bull. Yeah. Yeah, he's sort of a special breed. He's a new strain around here. I sure would like to see him win himself a blue ribbon at that fair. Think he can? A lot of hard work. He's got a chance, yeah. Boy. I'd give anything to have a bull like that. Look the way he holds his head. Yeah. Yeah, he knows he's a champion, don't he? I reckon that's a hard thing, being a man. Yeah. It's about the hardest thing we have to learn in this life, Billy. Matter of fact, a lot of fellas never quite make it. How do you learn? Well, it's a different thing with different men, I reckon. When it happens to you, you know it, though. Mr. Cartwright? I come over here to tell you I'm sorry for what happened this afternoon. I reckon I acted pretty dumb. Yeah, I reckon you did it that, Billy. Apology accepted. I didn't know they was gonna rustle your cattle, honest. I believe you, Billy. Really? Sure. Ain't very often anybody believes what I say, including my pa. Billy, are you sure you're giving him a chance? He don't give me much of a chance, Mr. Cartwright. If he'd only... Only what? If he'd only let me do something on my own. Like raise a few head of cattle. I've asked him. All he cares about is pigs. Billy. You, uh... 
You really want to be a cattle man? Oh, boy. Do I. Mr. Cartwright, I, I'd do just about anything. Billy, I got myself a real problem. Maybe you can help me. What kind of problem? Well, like I was telling you, I'm trying to get old Macho ready for that fair, and well, what with all the work I got to do on the ranch, I just ain't got time. Maybe you can take him over for me, huh? I know that's pretty unfair of me to ask, I reckon. I mean, it takes a lot of work to get a bull ready for a fair. And a lot of trimming, grooming, and brushing, and combing. Yeah, a fella has to have a real feeling for cattle to get one ready for a fair. Right, who could help me? What, what's that old Kellerman kid's name? Alex, ain't it? Yeah, Alex Kellerman. I bet he'd help. He'd be a hand, too. An old kid had a calf in that last Virginia City Fair, and as I recall, he did pretty doggone well. And yeah, he'd be good hand. Mr. Cartwright, if if I did it, would we have to tell my pa? Billy, wouldn't you want to tell your pa? No, he wouldn't understand. Well, any way you want to work is fine with me. Then it's a deal. All right, he's yours. been keeping yourself. I missed having you around. I've been kind of busy, Sam. I'm on my way to the Ponderosa. I've been working. <laughs> so are we, ain't we, boys? <laughs> I, uh, thought you'd like your share. I, I, I don't deserve it, Sam. I didn't earn it. Uh, you're a member of the gang, ain't you? The rules say we all share and share alike. Here, take it. Sam, I don't want it. What's the matter? You trying to weasel out on us? Hmm? You know the rules, don't you? Once you're in, <laughs> you're in for life. I'll give you this tonight, in town at the Silver Dollar. But, Sam, I can't make it. Billy, I said be there and wear your gun. Boy. Hi, Billy. Uh, hi, Shale. Uh, you see Mr. Cartwright? Hoss? Uh, we left him down in uh, Sawhorse Pasture about a half hour ago. He'll be here about dark or a little after. Oh. Uh, can I help you? Oh, uh, I'll, I'll wait. Uh, well, I, uh, I could use some horn wax and some soap. <laughs> some horn wax? Yeah. What are you gonna do, kid? Try to wax up some of them pigs of yours? I can uh, get it for you, Billy. No, just I... wait a minute, wait a minute. He ain't told us what he wants it for yet. I'm fixing up a bull for the fair. A bull? Yeah. Well, that's a lot of bull right there. Everybody knows that the pig pens don't have nothing but pigs. Pigs and more pigs. Don't ever use that word again. It so happens Mr. Cartwright gave me the job of fixing up Macho Segundo for the Virginia City Fair. Macho Segundo, huh? Yeah. All right, kid, let me hear one now that I can believe. I'll leave the kid alone, Burkhart. Well, he shouldn't be coming around here telling us all them big lies. I ain't lying. Uh, don't pay no attention to that flannel mouth, Billy. He's just trying to get your goat. He's trying to get his pig, you mean, don't you? <laughs> Hold everything here. Everything, Billy. Burkhart's just joshing you. Can't you see that? Yeah. Hey, Billy, you forgot your. Hey, Billy. Man, that 
kid is plumb sensitive, ain't he? Well, you rode him pretty hard, and I don't know why you should. He seems like a nice enough kid to me. Well, how was I to know? Well, let's take care of the horses and get washed up. What a day, and we're going to have a worse one tomorrow. Well, we'll get the herd moved by noon. I don't even want to think about it. Boss? Yes, sir. Get one of the hands to put up the horses, huh? All right. Hope old Hopsing's got plenty of food for supper. It's a hungry and danger. Hey, what's the matter? I was just looking for Billy Penn's horse. He's supposed to be over here working on Macho. Well, maybe Billy's father's got to do some chores for him. He's monopolizing too much of that boy's time. Hey, slave driver. Howdy, man. What if I could get one of you fellas to put our horses up tonight? Hey, Burkhardt, what happened to you? I guess I was talking when I should have been grinning, horse. He got the rawhide in old Hank Penn's boy, and the kid just about took off one of his ears for dinner. Oh, yeah? Billy, uh, Billy's been here, huh? Yeah, about two hours ago. He came looking for you, said he wanted to borrow some horn wax and soap. Said he was getting old Macho Segundo groomed up for the fair. I got to Josh and the kid about them pigs of his, and that kid come at me like a wild-eyed scratching bobcat. Kid's got a plum bad temper to be so young. Was he telling the truth, Hoss, about you letting him work on that high-priced bull of yours? Yeah, yeah, that's truth, all right. Uh, look, fellas, if I was you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't Josh him about them pigs. Uh, you're telling me? He lit out of here like a devil was after him. I bet that kid's still running. Wanting soap and wax, huh? Yeah. See you fellas morning. Billy? Yeah? Where you been, boy? Out. That makes every night this week. Don't you think I ought to get some kind of explanation? Why? I ain't one of your pigs. Boy, you been drinking? Yeah. So what? I've been patient with you. But there'll come a time when I won't be. Let it come, old man. Let it come. You asking me to whip you? If you think you're man enough, come ahead.
Hoss was over to see you last night. You know what he wanted? Reckon I do. You been over at the Ponderosa? What if I have? You got no business over there. You're up to no good. You would think that, wouldn't you? What should I think? You've been out every night till all hours. Where are you going? For a ride, do you mind? I got work for you to do around here. You stay home. something important to do. Billy, I'm sorry about what happened last night with the hands. They, they didn't mean no harm. They shouldn't have called me those names. Billy, one of the first lessons you got to learn growing up is to take a ribbon from older men. They didn't mean no harm. It's just their way of having a little fun, that's all. Well, I don't like to be made fun of. Look, son. You gotta learn to laugh at yourself. If you can't, you might as well give up right now. But Hoss. Now, there, there's a fine example. You just call me Hoss. How long do you think it took me to get used to being called that? Oh, Billy, life gets mighty tough at times, and if you don't learn to laugh at it, you'll never lick it. Now, we got a lot of work doing on Macho. We don't get started. Sure, Hoss. Huh? Mr. Cartwright. No. No, it's Hoss. Now, come on, let's get old Macho back in the stall. Come on, Macho. Joseph, huh? it's all right. Huh. It's all right. I just thought that uh, if you want to sleep that badly, you might try your bed instead of my chair. I guess you're right. Up you go. Oh, I'm so glad we got those herds moved. I've, I've been counting cows in my sleep. Oh, this was awesome. Oh, he was he was out in the barn with Billy Penn last time I saw him working with Macho. You want me to get him? No, I'll I'll, uh, I'll talk to him later. Listen, I'm going to Carson City tomorrow morning. And I want you and Hoss to make sure that our entry is registered properly at the fair. Hey, you know, Billy's doing a fine job with that bull. You ought to see him. Yeah. Yeah, I have seen him. I'm afraid that isn't all that Billy's been up to. Oh, what's that supposed to mean? Well, the Sheriff Coffee was over this morning. He thinks that Billy's running around with Sam Cotterfield and that gang. Well, is he sure about it? No, he's not sure, but he's, you know, he's trying to find out. He thinks he might round that gang up next week sometime. I sure hope that Billy isn't among them. Right. Here you go, Masha. Sure looks fine, Billy. Sleek as a teardrop. Think he's got a chance, Hoss? A chance? He's doggone right he's got a chance. Why, well, he'll knock those judges right out of the seat. Yes, sir. He sure looks fine. You've done a mighty good job with him, Billy. Well, tomorrow's a big day, huh? Yep, I got our cart and everything all ready to go. Well, I mean, we'll cart him in. We don't want him walking. I want him losing none of that pretty fat. Well, reckon there's nothing more we can do tonight. Guess I best be getting on home. 
Night, Billy. You know, I ain't never had anybody I could really look up to before. Guy needs somebody, you know? Really? What about your paw? Wanted to, Hoss. I really did. Oh, was a time when I wanted to be just like him. Then I grew up and saw what he was. Night, Hoss. Billy. You will never know what a fine man your paw is. And why don't he act like it? What are you doing in that barn? Pa? Hank! Hank! What? Billy. You wouldn't let me explain, would you? You wouldn't give me a chance. Hank, I can explain all this. Maybe I should have before now. Come here, let me show you something. Ain't he something? And Billy did it all by himself, Hank. Why didn't he tell me? I don't know. I reckon he wanted to surprise you. He wants you to be proud of him, Hank. Son. See what I mean, Hoss? Cousin. Fun, cousin. Fun. I think I see where some of that fun is gonna start. Come on. Mr. Pigman. Hold up there, Pigman. What do you want? Just want to pass the time, indulge in a little friendly chit chat with a real Pigman. Let me buy. I declare, you're just not friendly at all today, are you? Where's Pig Boy? been seeing my boy lately. That's right, Mr. Pigman. Billy running around with trash. You know all the answers today, don't you, Pigman? And I got some advice. Keep away from Billy. Mm -mm, move aside, boys. He's a tough old pig. Look at them pies, Joe. Hi, Miss Millick. Uh, you look at the pies, Hoss. I got something better to look at. Uh, Miss Millie, won't you give me a big old piece of that big old juicy looking apple pie there? Huh? You going to the dance tonight? I might be. Well, what's that mean? You got another date? 
Well, no, silly, I have work to do. At the dance? I'll be in the kissing booth. Oh, it's for charity, you know. Well, I mean, it, nothing wrong in doing it for charity, is there? Um, no, I think it's great. Would you like a piece of pie, Joe? I think I'll save my money for later. Sure is good, Joe. Well, I'll bet it is. That's right. I gotta get over to the bar and get macho. We're keeping him over there, though. The judging. See you all that while. Bye, Miss Millie. Cousin. A little after one o'clock. You reckon we ought to get a bite to eat? Ah, oh, you and your stomach. Later. Anyway, you won't starve. I want to look up an old friend first. Who, oink oink? The pig boy? That's right. Billy Penn. <laughs> Come on. about it, big fella? You gonna win that ribbon for Billy? You're some animal. Now, easy now. Been a long time since I've been around bulls. Fine, don't he? He looks like a million dollars, horse. I'm mighty proud of Billy. Why don't you tell him so, Hank? I tried to this morning, horse. My tongue got tied up in my mouth like a bundle of rope. My people was never ones for speaking their minds. What can I do, horse? What can I do to let him know how I feel? God, Brian Hank, just bust out with it, that's all. Just can't teach an old dog new tricks. My dog on if it ain't Billy Pence. Hi, Sam. Good to see you. Good to see you, too, Billy. Where's your black bandana? I left it home. He left it home. What's this, Billy? You joined up with us, didn't you? Sam, I've been thinking. Look, you let old Sam do the thinking. Now, if we let you out, that puts us all in a tight spot, see? What do you mean? You know too much, boy, about us. I wouldn't tell anybody. Well, now, how can we take that chance? How do we know? Sam Cotterfield, I told you to keep away from my boy. Now, get. Do you detect a strong odor of, uh, pig? I sure do, cousin. Phew! I smell pig. Who are you gonna whip now, pig man? You hear me, pig man? You're nothing but a dirty, stinking pig pen. Pa, don't let him say that. Stinking pig man, run! Sam! Sam! Billy, 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 Billy! Calm down, settle down. Leave me alone. Settle down, Billy. Pig boy, you remember what I told you, and you remember good. Sam, let me tell you something about the healthiest move you can make, all of you. 
That is, unless you want to get those pretty faces bashed up. Just get out of here. I mean right now. Yep. Come on, boys. Let's get out of this stinking place. It's almost 2 o'clock, Bill. We better go get Macho out of the barn. Well, just leave me alone, will you? Billy. Turn around here, boy. Look up at me. Look up at me! Look here. You've been sulking and puning around here just about long enough. You don't want to be a man, do you? You think you'll get more attention walking around dragging that bottom lip around between your feet, huh? I got a suggestion for you, Billy. If you're gonna grow up, you grow up right now. Or go off and join that garbage heap with that Sam Cotterfield and that bunch. You saw what happened. They humiliated him. And he just took it. He's a coward. A coward? Hank Penn a coward? Not hardly, boy. Not hardly. Let me tell you something. Your pa's one of the bravest men I ever knew in my life. He's had battles you don't even know about, boy. And he won them. Won them all. No. Your pa, he ain't got nothing to prove to nobody. He knows what he is. He's a man. You're wrong, Hoss. He does have to prove something to me. Hey, boys. Looks like the pig man wants to be a cow man now. You got no business in here. I got lots of business in this barn, pig man. You ain't gonna like none of it. You do anything to upset this bull? And I'll break your head like I should have done before. Well, now, who said anything about hurting the bull? But, uh, it is an idea. I'm warning you. Hey, you guys. I think the old pig man's in love with this bull. Ain't that awful? Why, that's bound to make them pigs of his powerful jealous. <laughs> your hands off that bull. Cousin, you ever see a, a one-eared bull? Can't say as I have, cousin. He'd be sad. For me, sport. You're about to see a one eared pig farmer. Hey, 
you still love me? The sheriff wants to talk to you. Let's go. Joe, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Big as you are out there playing on mud pies. Oh, little Joe Cartwright, I... Oh, well, I hate you. Well, just look at you. Huh? Hey, Millie, where? Hey, huh? Oh. <laughs> 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 Looks like I got a man for a son. Thanks, Bill. Thank you, Pa. Looks like I've had a man for a pile along. Just wasn't smart enough to know it. Hey, you two. We got a blue ribbon winner. Did you forget? Oh, we haven't forgot about it. Have we, son? No. No, sir. How could we forget about something as important as that? Burning up the upper pastures, we had to move the herds. Major, how is he? As good as can be expected. Doc dug the bullet out of him. Old boy horse wouldn't let us move him. Oh, oh, man. My goodness gracious, what are you trying to do with yourself? Well, I was standing just outside the door there when they come galloping up. As soon as I seen it, one of them was Carver Lassiter. I yelled to Johnny here to get my scatter gun. Well, Carver recognized me and opened fire, and then Johnny started shooting. I never hit a single one of them. Well, it all happened too fast. Well, at least they didn't get what they come after. We still got Harry Lassiter locked up in there behind them bars. How many men try to break him out? I believe there's four men. There's still five days before the hang, and they're going to try again. And that's for sure. How many men do you have backing you up? And that's just a trouble. Oh, Johnny, will you stop fussing over me? I ain't no woman. That's the trouble, Ben. There ain't very many men in this town willing to stand up them Lassiters. Ain't that the way of it? Everybody cries out for justice. They want a nice, clean little town, but as soon as trouble comes along, everybody heads out for a hiding place like a desert rat in a sandstorm. Well, you certainly in no shape to go after them yourself. That's why we're sent for you, Ben. We want you to take Roy's place. That, that's if you're willing. Harry Lassiter killed my son in cold blood. Judge Simpson sentenced him to hang for it, and I intend to see that he does. Major, I think you're forgetting that the rest of them Lassiters is equally determined that Harry don't hang. We need help, Ben. And it's going to be awful hard to get men to fight them Lassiters, believe me. Those murdering jackals have got to be stopped. All right, Hoss. You better get on home, help Joe and the others get that herd through Eagles Pass. Oh, no, Paul. You're staying, I'll stay with you. Joe can handle that by himself. All right. In that case, I hereby appoint you a deputy. Roy, you gonna go on home or we're gonna have to carry you home? No, I ain't going home and you ain't gonna carry me. Now, this cot is just as good a place as any to keep off my feet, and that's all the doc said I had to do. All right. 
Well, I guess we better get to work, boys. <laughs> You mean a whole town full of people and nobody shows up at us? Ben, you telling me that nobody else answered your call for help? Well, fellas, looks like you talked a little bit too soon. Reverend? Gentlemen. Are these the only men that showed up? Yeah, I'm afraid so, Reverend. Uh, reminds me of some of my congregations. The greater the need, the less the response. If there's anything I can do to help. We've already sent a telegram to the army. We can just get some troops in here. We can smoke them out. It's my father. They're going to kill him. Please help him. Please, somebody do something. Reverend, please, you have to help him. They're going to kill him. Just take it easy now. What, what happened to your father? Well, Carver Lassiter and three other men came riding into the yard. And they pulled their guns. And they marched right into our front room. And they forced my father to go with them. And they told me to bring the sheriff this. Judge Simpson is number one. Every day at sundown, there'll be another. If Harry Lassiter hangs five days from now, they hang, all five of them. You better believe we mean it. You better believe it. There's going to be a shortage of a lot of important people in this town. <laughs> This is it. Get down. Hey, Judge, I'll help you. Yeah, just... Well, there you are, Judge Simpson. You can't say we didn't give you a nice, safe journey. Might I ask just what do you intend to do with me? Well, now, that, uh, that all depends. Yes, sir, that all depends. Now, you do be careful. Come on, Judge. Carver. Yes, Ma. What's holding you? Bring him in. Oh, Mrs. Lassiter. Judge Simpson. By what right have you had me brought out here? I demand you... You're not sitting in that courtroom now, Judge. Remember that. Mrs. Lassiter, you are going to regret all of this. The only regret we're going to have is keeping you alive four more days. Don't worry, Judge. You're going to have plenty of company. Unless they set my son free, you're just going to be the first of five hanging from that tree over there. Now, time up. Do 
you seriously believe that Mrs. Lassiter intends to go through with her threats? I sure do, Reverend. I sure do. Elizabeth Lassiter became a very bitter woman when her husband died. But five, Ben. Five lives for one. I know. <laughs> the answer to your wire just came, Ben. Oh, thank you. The Army can't get here for a week. Well, that's too late to do us any good. I guess it's up to us. Well, I'll stay here with Roy. You fellas get ready to start combing the back country early in the morning. <laughs> get some rest, gentlemen. See anything? We deployed for several miles along the river, but if anybody had ridden that way, they certainly knew how to cover their tracks. Yeah, we didn't see nothing either. Like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Mr. Dietz, you got any more ideas that the Army taught you as a scout? Yep. Let's call it quits for today and get on home. It's almost sundown. That was the threat. Somebody else each sundown. We better get home and protect our families. Let's go, men. Careful, Ben. He's slick as a fox. Don't try anything. early, ain't it? Well, the cook at the hotel want to get home before sundown? Of course, if he did, why, uh, ain't no place he can go if they want to get him that they're going to get him. <laughs> oh, that's yes, good. That, that is very, very good. You seem to be enjoying this. Wouldn't you? I'll tell you something, Cartwright. You and me, we just naturally think different. I mean, you and that family of yours, you, uh, you got everything. Me, Ma, and Carver, we ain't got nothing. I mean, it just figures that we're gonna hate you, and you're gonna hate us. <laughs> I don't hate you, Harry. But I sure do feel sorry for you. Well, thanks, but I can do without it. It's a long, lonely walk to the gallows. Oh, are you out of your mind? You know I ain't gonna take that walk. <laughs> Sorry to inconvenience you, driver. 
I understand you have a passenger for Virginia City aboard. I got several. You flag me down just to ask a fool question like that? Nah, this is a particular one I've got in mind. His name's Merrick. L.B. Merrick. I uh, understand he's a prosecuting attorney in town. I'm L.B. Merrick. What do you want? Yeah, this is an emergency, Mr. Merrick. Maybe you uh, better step out and read this. As you can see, it's very serious, Mr. Merrick. Now, if you just mount up, Mr. Merrick. Yes, sir. Of course. I, uh... I wonder if I could impose on one of you gents to deliver this note to Sheriff Coffee in Virginia City. Indeed, I'd be happy to, sir. I'd appreciate it. It's rather important. Get up! Where's the sheriff's office? Right down there, sir. Sheriff Coffee? Oh, oh no, uh, well, Sheriff Coffee's just recovering from a wound. Uh, I'm taking his place temporarily. Name's Cartwright. Hugh Gwilned. Hmm? I'm the hangman. The condemned man? Yes. Oh. Been years since I was called to Virginia City. Uh, I'll be building the gallows across the street and I'll be posting a notice on your wall outside uh, with your permission. Certainly. Oh, I almost forgot. I was asked to deliver this note to the sheriff. Judge Simpson, now I'll be Merrick. Two of our leading citizens. Yeah, and who will they try and get next? <laughs> we can't ensure the safety of everyone in town. Not with just the eight of us. Seven of us. Well, there must be something we can do. Yeah. Yeah. You can crack down the Lassiters. That is going to take a bit of luck. Hmm. 
Because all we found today was deer tracks, cougars, and a couple of wagon trails. Yeah, they're a clever bunch, all right, especially that Ma Lassiter. <laughs> well, what are we going to do? Sit around here all night join, or go out and put a hustle on and try to find those hostages? Oh, we're going to get some rest. That's what we're going to do. We need it. We only have three days left. Yeah. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night, Good night, Good night. Good night. Good night, boys. Thank you. Good night, Major. Helpers? It seems they think a dollar a day is not worth antagonizing the Lassiters. Well, you gonna be finished in time? Oh, that I will. You can depend on it. I've never missed an engagement for a hanging yet, and I've officiated at quite a few these past 15 years. Split up again. What chance have we got against the Lassiters if we split up? It violates basic military tactics. Major, we ain't got much time left. We can cover a whole lot more territory in two groups. Come on, fellas. Good morning. We'll meet here at dawn. Now, now, don't go counting on me. This gout of mine has been killing me all day. I don't know how much more of it I can stand. Another thing, I'm beginning to think I haven't seen my family in weeks. You're not the only one with personal problems. See you in the morning. Major, don't you want to talk to Paul? I wish I had something to talk to him about. Find your new room, do you like it? You remember me, little Joe? What's happened to you? Why are you doing all this? Why, I'm gonna kill you, little Joe. And them too, unless that sheriff gets some sense and lets my boy go. Mrs. Lassiter, they're not going to let Harry go. What good is he going to do to kill us? Might help even the score. 
You don't think I'd forgot what your pa and the rest of them noble citizens did to destroy my husband. Oh, now, hold on, Elizabeth. The bank did what it had to do with that loan. It had to turn it down because Will was too deep in debt already. Everyone on the board of directors of the bank agreed on it. And forced him into going bankrupt. He wound up killing himself. Yeah, and we've been running like wild animals ever since. Now, you don't think I'm going to let him take my boy Harry, too, do you? Go on, tie him up, Carver. Farago, Blackie, give him a hand. You bluffing, ain't you, Elizabeth? I meant every word I said. Well, whatever you say will be done. You ask me to ride my horse off a cliff, I do it. You know that. But this doesn't make any sense at all. Kurt, when you were working for Will and me, were you in the habit of telling us what we did didn't make sense? Because if you did, I don't recall it. No, I kept my mouth shut. Even if I disagreed, which I admit wasn't too often. But Will, most of the time, knew what he was doing, and you did too. But that boy in there is right. Killing them isn't going to solve anything. Elizabeth, listen to me. Robin Banks is one thing. Holding up stages, raiding towns, all that was for a purpose. To be able to buy the land that Will promised you and the boys. And sometimes we had to kill to accomplish it. But this, I'm begging you, Elizabeth, don't ask me to. Not in cold blood. Why me? Why have I got to die because of a feud that started years before I ever came to Virginia City? Relax, nobody's dead yet, Mr. Merrick. No, but I will be. If they don't do what she asks. In two months, my wife's going to have a baby. Is hanging Harry Lester with my child growing up without a father? You talked a different tune when you demanded the death penalty for Harry Lasseter at that trial. Are you trying to say that verdict should be reversed just because your life is in danger now? If it was in my power to make a deal with Mrs. Laster right now, I'd no. do it. All right, you stand on principles if you want to. I'm more interested in living. Mr. Merrick, we're all interested in living. Cartwright, come here. This you gotta hear. <laughs> it's gonna kill you. suggest I do. We let him go. We can always put a posse on his trail after we get little Joe back safe and sound.
The decision's yours, Mr. Cartwright. Little Joe's your son. We got no choice, Paul. Roy, now, Hoss, you look here. Harry Lassiter in there has been tried, convicted, and sentenced to be hung. And it is my sworn duty to see that that sentence is carried out. Now, if you or anybody else lets him go, I've got to arrest him for obstructing justice and happen a prisoner to escape. <laughs> Paul. Sorry to hear about little Joe. How's Ben taking it? Well, he figures we'll go ahead with the hanging. I reckon Mr. Weems decided not to go with us today, huh? Gentlemen, we're wasting time. We've got exactly two days to prevent a mass slaughter. What's your neck size, Mr. Merrick? What do you mean? Well, your time's running out, boy. You ever seen a man hang before? It ain't very pretty. Your face turns blue. What do you want of me? <laughs> Nothing. I just like to see you squirm. You squirm real good. But can you squeal? You see my friend over here. If he starts anything, you squeal real loud here. Carver. What's the matter, Ma? What you been up to in there? Just arranging for a little uh, extra insurance. Well, you better get them horses saddled. It's almost sundown. Come on, Kurt, we got work to do. Carver, be careful. Yeah, sure, Ma, I'll watch it. You and Harry, all I got. See? There they go again. There's no way to stop them. If we were all like you, Mr. Merrick, there wouldn't be.
Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Joseph, I can't believe Mrs. Lassiter will go through with her threats. No, I'm not so sure about that, Reverend. I've got to let that Lester boy go. Can't you see that? Shut up, William Merrick. I have a life to live, things to do. Why have I got to die? Why me? Please, Mr. Merrick, get a hold of yourself. I don't want to die. None of us want to die, Mr. Merrick. But all of us in life must face that possibility sooner or later. The thing is to face it with dignity. Don't give me any of your theological nonsense. It's only life or death, that's all. Is that what you truly believe, Mr. Merrick? Well, what else is there to believe? We believe it all in God. Joe, what are you planning on doing? I'm planning on getting us out of here. No, no that, that's no good, Joe. Unfortunately, the Reverend Holmes and I aren't cut out for this sort of thing. He's right, Joe. We'll just get in your way and slow you down. Well, look, I can't just leave you here. Well, I, I don't see that you have much choice, Joe. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful... Hey, shut river. up! One of them got away. Harper! Are you all right? What happened? He got away, but he's on foot. Well, he can't go far. It'll be light in half an hour. Hunt him down. I want him dead or alive. Hunt him down! <laughs> Didn't you hear me? I said hunt him down. Kill him! Major should have been here long ago. Yeah. They all should have been here long ago. Well, we'll give them five more minutes. What do you suppose happened to them? Same thing has happened to this whole town. Look at that street. This hour of the day, there uh, ought to be people out there on it. Where's Alvy and Dietz? They aren't coming, Haas. Why not? We've got wives and children to think about. What do you expect? They're scared. The whole town's scared. What about you, Major? Us, I've led men into battle and seen them die all around me. I've killed men myself, and I've been shot at more times than I care to remember. I wouldn't think it possible for me to be scared of anything, but I am. I reckon that means you ain't going with us. 
Oh, I'm not. I've lost one son already. I don't aim to lose another. I'm staying here to protect the rest of my family. Well, that's the difference between me and you, Major. Part of my family's out there somewhere. I'm gonna go find him. I have to go alone. Hoss, it's plain foolishness for you to go out there alone. He ain't going alone, Major. I'm going with him. You can't. What'll that town say about the rest of us? Well, I reckon that's sort of your problem, Major. Come on, John. Yeah. You all right? Oh, my God. See ya. Come on. He must be down here. Shooting stopped. Mrs. Lasseter. Just what do you intend to do now? Unless they free Harry, you and everybody responsible for him being in jail will die. And what will that accomplish? Will it bring back your son? They've been my whole life, my boys. Everything I've done since Will died has been for them. All I wanted was to give them the home and the land they should have had. Is that so wrong? Ask yourself, Mrs. Lassiter. Does any purpose justify the methods you've used? The men you've killed? I'd kill the devil himself to save my boy's life. It's all I have. It's all I live for. If they hang Harry, there isn't anything that can keep me from killing you. You're wrong, Elizabeth. There's been enough killing. 
Stay out of this, Kurt. Stay out of it, Elizabeth. I've stayed out of it too long. It's gone too far. Carver's dead. <laughs> I should have done that a long time ago. Maybe then we both would have had a chance. Garver's dead. And now they'll hang Harry. All because of me. Oh, Kurt, what have I done? It's me they should hang. Where's Mrs. Lassiter? She's inside, little Joe. Carver's dead. She knows. I'll be with you. Thank you, Kurt. Stove, let's go see what that is. Hold on, little fox. Skeeter get you out of that trap. Oh. 
Take it easy, buddy. Take it easy. Before you yell, pull on it, the worst it's gonna be. Now just take it easy. Now, now try to pull it out. Oh, no, no, no. Help him first, Hoss. Get you to the house, pal. Help him first. Sit down, I'll be right there. for you share of the trap money forget it there ain't any somebody emptied all my traps I mean, the last living one of them uh, it ain't the money stony you know who it was that stinking skeeter he thinks more of them animals than he does of the man who fills his belly now where is that bottle stony skeeter's at our place he's hurt Oh, now, ain't that just too bad? He ain't hurt bad, but I figured you probably won't see him. He's your son. He's my stepson! You got half a brain at that. <laughs> oh. All right, all right, I'll go see the little... I'll saddle your horse. eat more than you. What's the matter? You don't like Hop Sing's cooking? Just ain't hungry, that's all. Mr. Hoss, come back with your father pretty soon. Skeeter, here's your paw.
You want to eat this, Mr. Hoss? Oh, I reckon I can manage that, Hopsane. Hey, why don't you uh, get another plate and some coffee here for Stoney, huh? Yes, sir. Right away. You emptied them traps, didn't you? Boy, you're gonna answer me. You think that trap cut you up? Just wait till I get through with you. Now answer me! Your paw's talking to you, son. into you, you... No, Stoney. Stoney! 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 Stoney, what are you trying to do to that boy? I'm not gonna do nothing to him anymore. I'm getting out of here. You hear that, boy? Come back to that pick of a woman who bullets you. You ain't got a brain, she got no heart. You ought to make a good match. All right, Stoney. Come on. You said you were leaving now. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> Wait a minute. I tell your father, Stoney don't need his charity no more. I'm going up north where I belong. You all right, Skeeter? His name's Stove. Stove and me are going to the barn. How come you stuck up for me? Well, he's gonna hurt you, son. did like him either, did you, Stowe? Huh? Yeah, I can tell when you like somebody. Yeah. You like me, don't you? Huh? If you could talk, you'd tell me. Oh, Skeeter, he's the most important person in the world. Yeah. Wish you could talk, Stowe. Skeeter, are you in here? Oh. Well, I wasn't hurting anything. I didn't say you was. But it's getting along about supper time. And you sure can't share old Penny's supper with her. Hey, have you met Penny? No. Come here, man. <coughs> Skeeter, meet Ponderosa Penny. <coughs> She's gonna have herself a baby in about two weeks. Oh, Big man, huh? Yeah, one of the best. Some of the best blood in the world. Little Joe, as a matter of fact, won a first prize championship with her last year and would have again this year, but she got hurt that knee. <coughs> Swole up, must hurt. You like animals, don't you? Where's little Joe? He's back at Denver for rodeo. Is it okay if I sleep in the barn tonight? I reckon that could be arranged if, if you'll come on to supper now. I'm willing. Come on. Come on, Stove. Stove, this here's Ponderosa Penny. She's a friend. Don't let them get friends, huh? Yeah. Mr. Hoss, everybody all time late. Oh, he and Ski will be in for breakfast in a little while. Thank you, Elsie. Oh, where's Skeeter? 
Well, he's gone. That's what I come to tell you. Just like that. Abracadabra, he's gone. He's a funny fellow, kid. It's, he never answers questions. He seems like he talks more sense to animals than he does humans. Well, it's not surprising, considering everything. You better have yourself some breakfast. Hop Singh's been yelling. I'll eat later, Paul. I think I better find this kid. I'll see Oh, no, Ma. I couldn't have another helping. Why, well, just about bust. It sure was a good supper, though. I bet Ma makes about the best sweet potatoes in the world, don't she? Why, Pa, shoot. You ain't getting fat, no. You're just big and strong, I'd say. You sure do look nice, Ma. Pretty as a picture. You want your pipe, Pa? Well, stay put. Let me get it for you. I should be getting you your pipe all the time now. Pay you back for all them peppermint sticks you bought me. Here, let me light it for you. Oh, shoot. I'm old enough to handle matches now, I guess. You taught me all about that. Hi, Skeeter. do that, son. I gotta ask you a question. Where's your ma? Dead. She's dead. That ain't what Stoney told me yesterday. I don't want to see her. That ain't what it looked to me like back there in that cabin, either. Stove's back there. I gotta go. Now, you listen to me, Skeeter. I ain't gonna let you go on hiding with that bird. I didn't give up chasing you this time, and I won't the next time. You're gonna take me to your ma, and you might as well make your peace with that. You'll see then. You'll see. That's her. You wait back down the hall. Miss Dexter? Miss Dexter? be moving up in the world. I want to talk to you about Skeeter. I need to talk uh, to you. Oh, hey. It's about Skeeter. I got him outside out there. It's none of my concern. Stoney looks after him. Well, that's, that's just it, Miss Dexter. Mrs. Dexter. Stoney left him. Stoney's gone. 
so. So you're the boy's mother. Now that I heard the sermon, what ham are we going to say? How come you're butting in? I'm worried about the boy. Oh, well, I'm worried about me. The boy's 16 years old. I was his age. I've been carrying him for three months. I made it alone. <laughs> Let him do it. He needs somebody. Well, then why don't you buy him a mother? You cart rides. You buy everything else in this town. Why don't you buy him that if you're so worried? What did he ever do to you? He got born. Got me married to a man that ran off before Skeeter ever even drew a breath. Got me so desperate, I thought maybe Stoney could help. What did he do? He got me here! You better make tracks before I start ruining your lily white reputation around this town. You can take that kid and put him in a sack and throw it in the river for all I care. He gave me pain when I had him and it ain't stopped yet! I told you, Hawes. I just don't understand a woman like that. She gives birth to that boy, and then she hates him. Does she? Oh, if you'd have seen her and heard her, you wouldn't have to ask that question. She's a woman, Hoss. No, she ain't. She's something else. Maybe there's a time when she's a woman, but not anymore. She's filled with nothing but hatred and meanness. No, I can't believe that. Hoss. A woman may say that she hates her child. She may even tell the child she hates it. But I don't think she can ever forget that she was once part of a miracle. And she was once as close to God as anybody can ever get. I don't think Skeeter's mother can forget that, although she may want to. Why would she want to? Well, she was... Just a young girl. I guess she was no more than about 16. She met this fellow. He wasn't much good. But they got married, and Skeeter was born, and then the fellow disappeared, lit out. And every time she looks at Skeeter, she sees the boy's father. She hates him. Hates Skeeter. What are you making, anyhow? Oh, I'm just making a perch. Mosquitoes crow. Bed? Hey, yeah. Hey, Paul. I want to show you something. Is the matter the bed too soft? It's all right. Bye. 
not. But... It's Penny, Mr. Cartwright. She caught her bad leg in the stall ran. I tried to get her out, but I think it's broke. Yeah, get into the house. Where are the other boys? They ain't come back yet. She's scared crazy, Mr. Cartwright. I tried, but she's gonna kill that boy. Skeeter, get in the house. Skeeter. Quiet down now, Penny. You gotta quiet down. Skeeter, get out of there. Come on. Easy, girl. Easy, Benny. Get, him, get over here now. Get over leg. Move forward. Move forward. Move forward, Benny. Move forward, Benny. Let's give this important. Listen. We're going to try to move her forward. If we do, we can get her leg out. But you're going to have to guide her. Understand? What if we don't get her out? She could lose her fall. Come on, Hoss. Move forward, Benny. burn you, Penny, you may be a female. But you ain't no lady, that's for dang sure. She ain't putting no weight on that foot, that's for sure. She sure ain't. Easy, girl. Easy. It ain't broken, but there's a lot of stuff tore up inside, though. Oh, so you think we can fix her up with some hot water and Epsom salts? Maybe. All this excitement, Paul. I'm sure afraid she's gonna slip that coat. Sure as a whirl. Yeah. Well, see if you can bet her down. I'll get one of the boys to get Doc Woods. You don't need a doc. I can take care of her. Skeeter, she needs a doc. Bring that pail inside. I'll get Hop Sink to boil up some water. Hey, Hoss. Will you fetch the water so I can stay with her? I think she's gonna need somebody. Don't hurt so much when somebody's with you, you know. Yeah, you sure you want to do that, Skeeter? It's three hours to sun up. I'm sure. Besides, Penny wants me to stay, don't you, girl? Yeah, I reckon she does, Dad. Easy, girl. Back up now. Back up. Come on. Easy. Easy does it. Easy. Easy on that foot. Easy. There you go. Don't worry, that leg will get better. Mine is, too. Don't you worry, old girl. My leg's getting better, and so are yours. I'm gonna help you. Yeah. Hi, Doc. Hi, Oz. Thanks for coming so quick. No problem. Hey, uh, how's the hand, buddy? Well, it's broke, Hoss. Yeah, burn ain't that the luck. Hop Sane's got some hot coffee in there. Go ahead and get some. Hey, Thank you. you fix that? I didn't know you was a people doctor, too. <laughs> no, Doc Harris did it. Mayor in the barn? Yeah. He tried some Epsom salts and hot water, but that didn't seem to be any good. Well, I'll keep him quiet, it's the main thing. Yeah. Kid's out of here. Skeeter? Well, where is she? I don't know. But I'm gonna skin that Skeeter alive. What are you talking about? Skeeter! Skeeter, Dexter! Skeeter? Is that Joy, son? Yeah. Now, Penny, don't that feel better, huh? Yeah. You keep still while I get the bottle set up, okay? Beautiful? Oh, Penny won't have that mushmelon leg when I get done with her. I guess I better go to Taryn. Skeeter. 
I'm fixing Penny's leg. Yeah. Skeeter, this is Doc Woods. Howdy. Nice to meet you. You the vet, ain't you? Yep. But, uh, seems I'm not the only one in the area. <laughs> Well, you're doing a fine job, Skeeter. Your mother be proud of you. My mother? Yep. She's a friend of mine. Yeah, well, hey, uh, look, Skeeter, maybe maybe the doc understands all you're doing here, but I don't, won't you? Go down and explain it to me. Doc, the boy's pretty sensitive about his mom. Nothing wrong with Joy Dexter that a little understanding wouldn't cure. Hey, Hoss. You see, I got her in the water here to get some cold on that leg. Now I come on up here, I put some sun on it with this. See? Like, like starting a fire. And then I pack that leg up with mud, and then I wrap it up with this. Well, you're asleep, and I didn't want to wake you up. That's mighty considerate of you. <laughs> this is really fine, Skeeter. But you didn't have to bother putting heat on the knee. Just cooling her out's enough. Fine job, anyway. Thanks. Doc, you mean all the stuff that Skeeter's been doing here is right? Right as rain. But we're gonna need real help taking her back to town. Back to town? What do we have to take her to town for? Well, we're gonna board Penny at my place till she drops the foal. Look, Skeeter, Penny's a pretty sick horse. But you said I was doing a good job. Both of you said so. Well, Skeeter, you are doing a good job, but, but you ain't no doctor. You said she wanted me to stay with her, and now he wants to take her to town, and you're gonna let him go. It's for Penny's own good. But it ain't. I can tend her as well as you can, better. Skeeter, I'm a vet, and I... You don't love her like I do. I know you love her better than I do, but I can help her more. Hoss, Penny wants me to be with her. I can sleep right here, and I'll tend that leg like anything, and, and, and I'll read books and, and read up on it. Oh, Hoss, please. Dad burn it, Skeeter, I'd say, yeah, just like that if Penny is well, but under the circumstances, I... I was lying anyway. I don't give two hoots about that horse. You know what I hope? I hope she slips that foal and dies doing it. Come back here, Skeeter, let me explain. Let the boy have her. What? Doc, wouldn't that be taking off a big chance? Maybe. But Skeeter's had a life of people taking things from him. I want to give him something. Yeah. You better get on back, tell Horse what to do. I think he's going to let you keep the mare. Thanks, Hoss. Hoss. Skeeter, you have a way of scaring people half to death. <laughs> come, calm down, Skeeter. You know, mares have had coats before, son. But, but something's wrong, Hoss. It ain't going like it oughta. What do you think, Paul? This is normal labor. She'll be all right, won't she? I don't know, Skeeter. Well, get Doc Woods, then. We gotta get Doc Woods. Hoss, on my way.
Be right there. You're late. It's cold outside. Tea's ready. That'll warm you up. Only fair to warn you that I'm going to win tonight. I'll get the cups. You always forget the scorecard when I'm ahead. I got the tally book right here. I saw Skeeter at the Cartwrights. Taking real good care of him. Your lead, Joy. When I started coming here, we agreed just to play cards. I don't ask you to talk about Bertha. Bertha's been dead for seven years. Talking won't change that. Skeeter's alive. He's more alive and growing every day. He's almost a man. Funny, I can't think of Skeeter as a man. Only as a baby. Well, that's natural for a mother. It's funny what you remember about kids. When Skeeter was about four years old, I I asked him what he wanted to be when he grew up. And he wrinkled his little brow and he looked up at me and he said, I want to be a tree. Because he looked around and he saw what people were. He decided that the only good thing living was a tree. Because it was a part of the earth. And it didn't hurt anything. He was silly about things even then. That's not silly, Joy. I knew a boy like that once, so all he could think of were things like that. He turned out all right. Marry me, Joy. Let me love you. Stoney's deserted you. We need each other. Skeeter needs both of us. But why... Why would you want someone... Because I see... me and Skeeter. And I love you. Doc! Doc, you there? Yeah? Doc, it's me, horse. I'll be right there. Doc, it's Penny. She's in real bad trouble. We need you quick. I'll put on my coat. I'll be right with you. Is Skeeter out there now? Yes, sir. He's there with my paw. Can I go with you? Not until you put on your wrap. You take the high road, and I'll take the low road. And I'll be in Scotland before you. But I and my true love will never meet again. Oh, the money, money makes 
That singing's just a tonic to her. Yeah, she, uh, she seems to like it, all right. We've been keeping her pretty quiet, Doc. Hello, Skeeter. What's she doing here? I brought her along to help. Well, I can help you. Besides, this ain't no place for a woman. Oh, Skeeter, it might be just a place for a woman. You get me that wheelbarrow? Right, Doc. It's liable to be a long siege. Why don't you go get us some coffee? That's a good idea. Hop sings in the kitchen. He'll help you. All right. Up the tail? Yeah. Would you get on that? Well, I should get by her head, hold right. her down. Right, Doc. Skeeter, you pour this alcohol over my hands. Yes, sir. Plenty on there. That's it. How you feeling? Scared? A little bit. Blood bother you? No, sir. All right. You're my assistant. I'm counting on you. <laughs> Be a good mama. Lay down. Come on up, Penny. Down you go. That's a good girl. That's a good girl. All the way down. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's a good girl. Bring your head over. Come on. Come on. Lay down. Come on. Lay down. That's a good girl. There we go. There we are. All right, Skeeter. You finish wrapping the tail. Easy, Penny. Easy. Easy, girl. It's a good girl. Sure, you'll be fine. It's a breach, Ben. What's a breach? It's where the it's where the fold backwards. You can help her, can't you, Doc? Yeah, if I can get to the fold. <laughs> Easy, Penny. Come on, fold. It's not such a bad world that you have to. Back into it? Relax, baby. Come on, Penny. Relax. Come on, girl. I can't get to the foe. Ben, you'll have to make the decision. It's either Penny or the foe. Mr. Cartwright, please. Ben, we haven't got much time. Both, I say both. It's impossible. You're the doctor, you do something about it. That's my decision. But she won't relax. Well, do something to relax her. Skeeter, there's a black case in my bag. Bring it and the alcohol. Swab her neck, then. What are you going to do? Tracheotomy. She can't bear down if she can't hold her breath. <laughs> Easy. Pour some alcohol on that. Right. I'm doing this your way, Ben. We've got one chance in ten. Now hold her. Yeah. Grab her ear. Easy, Penny. I'm going to cut now. Hold it. Hold it. All right, keep holding. Uh, 
Keep that opening clean. Skeeter, quick. stuff away. Come on, quick, 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 clean it away. Hurry up. That's it. I got a hold. All right. Come on. Turn around. Turn around, fool. Come on. Come on, Doc, look. I know, I know. Keep working. Here, help pull, pull. Pull. Hurry up. More. <clears throat> oh, Doc, he's beautiful. He's dead. I'm sorry. Fool's dead, Ma. I'm so sorry. looking for all I've ever seen. Benny, you know what we're going to do for that boy of yours? We're going to feed him. Read that for me, please. Thanks. There. Now. Yeah. <laughs> there you are. Hey, what are we going to name it? How about Skeeter? After me? Um, well, I thought the Cartwrights might like to use it. It's a, it's a good name for a pet or a, or a boy. You're not going to be needing it anymore. Uh, Skeeter, what is your real name? I don't think you ever got around to tell us, did you? Charles William Dexter. Good name for a man. A little more then. <laughs> well, he's getting his breakfast. What about us? Well, I thought that I'd uh, take Skeeter, uh, Charles. And his mother into town for breakfast. How's that sound, Charles? 
That sounds fine, but we just got to come back later to see about Penny and the Colt. Well, I think that can be arranged. Uh, ben, I'll stop by LG's and see about a nurse mare for a few days. <laughs> the way this one is eaten, I don't know if you're going to need a nurse mare. Well, just a few more stitches, and we'll be on our way. Oh, Skeeter's really growing up, ain't he? Yeah, he sure is. How are you, little buddy? Bye. You think you can beat me this time? Yeah, I wouldn't try it, Oss. You remember what he did to your hand the last time? Yeah, but I've been practicing. I think I can take him this time. Okay. Ready? Ah! Ah! Okay, okay, that's enough, enough. Doggone. I told you, that Michael's got a grip like a grizzly bear. Oh, what a grip. Oh. Is that the mail you brought for us? Yeah, it sure is. Where's your pup? In the barn. Come on. All righty, I'll give you a piggyback ride. Oh! Oh, you're getting too big for this. Hey, little show. Yeah? What's Samaritan mean? Well, where'd you hear that? Sunday school? No, my dad said it. He said that the Cartwrights are good Samaritans for helping us. Are you? Well, I don't know. It's awful kind of your pa to say so, but we didn't do anything he wouldn't have done. Oh, go on. If you want to be one, you let me win a hand squeeze in there once in a while. <laughs> you see him, Elijah? No, Mr. Thorpe. Very dark here. Hey, Dad, how still Joe brought that mare over? Uh, just a second, Mike. What are you doing up there anyhow, Evan? Uh, we got some stray owls in here. We're trying to evict them. Hey, Elijah, you're not going to kill many owls with that broom, are you? Well, so far I kill as many with broom as Mr. Thorpe with gun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's enough for now. When Elijah starts making remarks, I figure it's time for a cup of coffee. You boys got time? Yeah, sounds good to me. Well, say, I want to see that animal first. <sighs> hey, that's a fine looking horse. Part of doctoring I hate. The death watch. Nothing I can do now but wait and hope and try to think of a way to tell that boy when it happens. Doc, isn't there, isn't there something more you can do? I believe in miracles, Ben, but I don't ever count on them. Mm. Mm. Now, don't try to talk, Evan. Just, just lie still. It's bad, isn't it, Doc? Well, it, it's hard to say. 
Don't lie to me, Doc. I ain't got no time for lies. I'm going out pretty quick now, ain't I? I'm doing all I can. It's not your fault. Ben. Mike know how bad it is? Yeah, I, I think so, yes. Let me see him, will you? you, Mike? Yes, sir. Yeah. You better come closer, boy. My eyes are all fuzzed up, seems like. Come on. Tell me, did you... Did you beat horse at hand squeezing today? Yes, sir, I did. Well, you're a strong fellow, all right. And a good boy, too. Please, Dad. Please what, Mike? Please, don't die. I'll try not to, Mike. I'll fight and I'll pray. Dad, please. Don't, Dad. Please don't die, Dad. Please. Why don't you put Mike to bed? He's in a coma. It's up to God now. Michael. You sleep, Michael? Did you hear what Dr. Randall said, Elijah? He said that only God could help my dad. Mm, Dr. Randall, wise man. God. What is God, Elijah? God. God is the most strong thing ever. All people come from God, and God know everything. God make everything to happen. How do you know? You're just an Indian. Indian white man. All same God. They teach Elijah at Trader Post Church. Did he make Dad get shot? Make all things happen. Then I hate God. No. No, not right. God knows better than people. Always have reason. Have good reason. But why would he want to hurt Dad? God's stronger than people, smarter than people. He have reason. He watch over everybody and everything. Even over birds he watch. He live high in the mountain, all alone, like an eagle. Where does he live? High in the mountain. All alone. What's he look like? God? Uh-huh. Oh, I think God must be a strong man. Maybe his face a little tired from all the trouble people do, I think. His eyes are cold like fire. His eyes see into soul. In the mountains. Mm hmm. High in the mountains. All alone. <laughs> Doc, what should the boys do if Evan wakes up? He's not likely to wake up, Ben. If he does, though, 
Just come and get me. Good night. I'll see you in the morning, house. All right, Paul. I'll see you in the morning, Joseph. Joseph. Oh, I'm sorry, Pa. I was just thinking about the boy. I remember when I was little, I, I realized one day that all my friends had two parents and I just had one. And sometimes when, when you used to go away on trips for a few days, I used to wonder what it would be like if you didn't come back. Oh, it used to frighten me. Of course, I, ne I never had to face that. Just the thought of it scared me that way. I just wonder what that little fellow must be going through. That's a pointless story, I guess. You to be up, isn't it? I couldn't sleep. How far is it to that mountain, Joe? Oh, that one, that, that's very, very far away. Why'd you ask? I just wondered. Elijah said that God lives in those mountains. Oh, I see, that's a... That's an old Indian legend. They used to, they used to think that mountain was sacred. The, the place of God, they called it. What's a legend? A oh, legend? It, it's kind of a story, you know. Like they teach in Sunday school? No. No, not exactly. See, in the, in the Bible. God's in the Bible, isn't he? Elijah said that God could help my dad. You know, I, I think Elijah's right. I see. Good night, Joe. Battle off in the middle of the night like that. I think Michael go see God. Michael did what? God live in mountain. Michael go see God. Ask him to help father. Did you tell him that? 
Do you believe it? He believed. Michael, go see God. And I think he's right, Hoss. Boy, ask me how far away those mountains were. He's got a pretty good head start. Let's get going. Oh, Joe, wait a minute. We can't just leave Mr. Thorpe. All right, you ride into town. Get Doc Randall. Bring him out here. In the meantime, Lodge can stay with Mr. Thorpe. Right. I'll see if I can get a couple of deputies from Roy Coffee. We're going to need all the help we can get. God take Michael to Mountain to help Father. Man should not interfere. says never to ride a lamed up animal. And you're sure enough lame. And if I can't ride you, there's no point in taking you along. So Mule, you can go home now. Well, go on. Go home. I'll be all right, Mule, honest. But you're all lame and I don't want to hurt you. I can take care of myself, Mule.
we go, Mike. You sit up nice and slow. Why don't you drink some of this and warm your tummy up? That's a boy. Yeah. How's that head of yours? Sore. Yeah, let me look. I guess it is. You really got an egg on there. We'll have the doc take a look at it. The doctor? Yeah, as soon as we get back. I can't go back. I got to stay. I saw him. See, see, God isn't isn't something you can always see, like a like a tree or a rock. I did see him. Up there, little Joe. It was God. And when was that? Just before I fell. Yeah, now, are you sure that wasn't just after you fell? No. That's why I fell. He scared me. What did he look like? He had a tired face mm -hmm. and eyes like cold fire. Eyes like cold fire. Just like stars. Now, Mike, Michael, you know, you're old enough to know the difference between telling the truth and telling a lie. I saw him. I'm not telling a lie. Oh. Well, See, sometimes people, people want to see something so bad that they really think they see it. Now, it, it's not, it's not really lying, but. But I saw him. I've got to stay. I've got to ask him to help my dad. You know, God answers everybody's prayers. Everybody's. But sometimes the answer is no. What are you gonna do if... Well, if God's answer is no. I'll give him a licking. You say your prayers? Sure. Dad always says grace at meals. And we go to church sometimes. Why? Well, when you pray, you're praying to God. And he's right inside of you. Same as, same as he's inside me, he's inside everybody. But he's not a man who lives up on a mountain. Don't you see? There's a man living up in the mountains right now. Don't it? Well, that's what I am, boy. A wild eagle. I kill for my food. I live off this country. I sit up here on top of this mountain and I see all that goes on down below me. Don't you get lonesome? I've gotten used to it. Now move on. You know me, don't you? Uh, some about your face. I'm Tom Kane. Tom Kane, Summit Ridge Massacre. The very same. Well, I thought you were dead. I am. Or I was, till you came along. Move on. your fancy? It's about as much as you do. Kid, it's in them canteens over there. 
There's a creek across that knoll. You take them canteens and get them filled, you hear? Yes, sir. And don't get any notions about running away, because you got no place to go. Why should I run away? I came to see you. What? You know me? Yes, sir, I know you. Well, all right, then. You do as I tell you, do you understand? Why'd you hurt my father? What are you talking about? You shot my dad. Well, I've been blamed for a lot of things I didn't do. I don't even know your father. Yes, you do. Lysha said that you know everything. Now, what's all this talk? You do as I tell you. Michael, go on, do what he says. We'll talk about your dad later. Let's go on, Mike. Yeah. Later. You tie your horse up to that tree. Then you get inside here. Or I can keep an eye on you. Go on, move on across. Now, what are you doing? Bounty hunting a kid like that alone. I'm not bounty hunting. He said you were looking for me, didn't he? No, not exactly. His father was wounded in an accident. He's not expected to live. What's that got to do with me? Well, an Indian who worked for his father said that God lived up here on this mountain. He came up here to ask God to spare his father's life. And he thinks that I'm God? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny, ain't it? <laughs> Me, old Tom Kane. You know, in a way, I am God, though, ain't I? I think that would take a little stretch of the imagination. Does it? Well, you just think about that, you and that boy. Your lives are in my hands, aren't they? The power's mine to... Give a life or to take it. Oh, that's a good feeling, you know. That's a real good feeling. You ought to know it pretty well. Yeah. You sit down. Right there. You put your hands behind your head. Move. You're a tough kid, aren't you? No. Yes, you are. All you kids are tough. You gotta be to survive this country. I was. You wait till you get old like me. And all the things you've done, they come back on you. You know, even up here alone. Up here alone. It seems crowded sometimes. The memories and the faces. Yeah, that's called conscience. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna have a crutch to fight that. Like this. No, go ahead, kid. Go ahead and make it easy for me. Be tough. I'm gonna kill you anyway. You just saved me the trouble of getting drunk to do it. Coals are still hot, and that's little Joe's bedroll. They can't be too far away. Little Joe dead. Elijah. This is God's place. God killed little Joe. Elijah, you quit that kind of talk here. Spirits take little Joe away. How do you think we find him? Look, Elijah, that's superstition talk. Now, let's get this straight. There ain't no spirits on this mountain. They ain't but two people, and they desperately need our help, and we're going to find them. Boss, Bob and I found some tracks up ahead. What'd I tell you? They're going up on that mountain. There's something mighty strange about them tracks, Hoss. Yeah, what's that? 
Well, me and Charlie could make out where little Joe and the kid was walking, leading a horse, but there's another set. Who do you figure it could be way up here? I don't know, but let's find out. Sergeant? Well, what are you looking at? Is it all right to talk about my dad now? It'll be all right when I say it's all right, not before. Now, what are you staring at? Not much. Now, stop staring at me. Kid, you go on down the slope there and gather up some wood. It gets cold up here in this mountain. Yes, sir. Oh, I hate kids. You know that? Yeah, I've heard stories. Summit Ridge, huh? Yeah, there were a lot of little Indian kids that night up on Summit Ridge. We rode in there, the eight of us. Drunker newborn calves. We killed them. Boy, did we kill them. Man, nah, it was no worse than killing a bunch of young wolves. You know, you get them when they're young before they're old enough to take your scalp. That's what we figured. The government. The <laughs> government put a price on our heads for what? It was no worse than killing young wolves. That's why I led that raid. When well, those Indians have been here now, burning and raiding right now, that's why I stopped them. <laughs> he curses me for it. Takes my wife, takes my daughter, takes my land, takes everything I had, and he drives me here to this blasted mountain. What are you telling me this for? You think I'm gonna feel sorry for you? No, I don't want your pity, and I don't want his either. You don't want it, or you don't think you can get it? Where should I put this wood? Hey, put it over there. Yeah. All right, what are you doing? Just wanted a drink, if you don't mind. A drink? Well, no. No, I don't mind at all. <laughs> Here, I'll, uh, I'll pour you a real good drink. You might as well enjoy it, as long as you can. <laughs> hey, kid. Come here. If you can take this over to him, Without spilling one drop, your father will be all right. Yes, sir. I won't spill it, sir. Kane. Tell him you're lying. What? Tell the boy it's a lie. Well, now, kid, I ain't exactly lying. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm just sort of testing you. That's all.
else we gotta get after him. You just lay here and take it easy. <coughs> oh, she don't understand. Michael's going after him. He might kill the boy. I know, you told us all about it. Just don't worry about nothing. How is he? He'll be all right. That Indian just took off. Took off where? I don't know. He just lit out of here like he's on fire. I guess he's scared stiff of them spirits of his. Well, we can't be worried about that now. Look, Joe, we're gonna track that fella down. You stay here and just take it easy. Don't you worry about nothing. We'll be back as soon as we can. You've done everything you could do. Let's go, Bob. trying to do, kid? Did I pass the task? What? My dad always said that God tests people to see if they're worthy. Did I pass? Yeah. Yeah, you passed, kid. You, uh, come on with me. What's your father like, son? He's just father, like everybody else's father. No. He must be pretty special. Or you wouldn't be doing all this for him. He must be a pretty good father. He is. Yeah, what are you doing? Don't you know? I, I just prayed that you would make a miracle happen to save my father's life. Now listen, kid, I... I don't know where you got this cockeyed notion that I'm... Well, I'm not who you think I am. And I'm not sure that I believe in him, but... Look, kid, I... I'm just a guy that's on the run. See, I'm, I'm the guy they preach the sermons about. You know, the, the, the lost sheep or whatever they call them. Now listen, kid. I'm nothing. 
Just that. Just nothing. Lie is my friend. He wouldn't lie to me. You're testing me again, ain't you? Please, just say Dad will get better. Now, kid, listen to me. And listen to me close. Hey, fellas. Tracks are right over that little knoll. Let's go. That's Pass. He's my friend. Get away from me, kid. I'm fighting for my life. They won't hurt you if you tell them who you are. Look, you stay back, will you? Calm down, Bob. If he's got that kid up there with him, we sure don't want to be shooting that direction. He could hold off an army from that mountaintop. What can we do? We can't just sit down there and take pot shots at us. I think I can get across that clearing and up the other side. It's a good idea, Charlie. You can try it. Keep me covered. Make sure you don't shoot any more on the top of them pine trees. We sure don't hit that youngster. I'm gonna try to outflank him. Elijah, now you hear? testing you now. I'm telling you the truth. I ain't God. I'm about as far from God as a man can get. I can't save your father. But, but let me tell you something, kid. If there is a God, and he cares about someone who believes in him, someone like you, no matter how tough things get, your dad will be all right. My father, no, he couldn't save him. <laughs> well, maybe he saved himself. Mm -hmm.
Michael, your father wants to see you. He's alive? Yeah, you bet he is. come out of the coma about three hours ago joseph the doctor had given him up it, 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 it's like a miracle you know Paul, i think that's just what it was Still out, looks like. Yeah, over three hours now. Well, it's taking them so dang long. Seems like to me it's a cut and dried case. That Irishman just up and shot poor old Fred Demmer then robbed him. Don't seem to me they got much to deliberate on. Man's life at stake, Mr. Porter. Don't reckon you make that decision without some pretty serious considerations. Boss, I'll lay odds it's that brother of yours that's holding up the verdict. I don't hold with putting young fellas like Joe on a murder jury. You need men who think alike. Men who'll take an eye for an eye. You know what I mean? Mr. Porter. Oh, Miss Demmer. Uh, just telling the horse I Carter. heard. Do you mind if I trouble you for a cup of water? That courtroom is, is, is like an oven. Of course, Mrs. Demmer. Come on over to the store with me. Town appreciates how you must be feeling. What with the trial, not letting you forget your sorrows for one minute. time I sat on a jury in a murder trial. Oh, what a responsibility. Deciding whether a man is gonna live or die. It's like you're burdened with the power of God. All right, now hold it, hold it. Look, if we're all gonna talk at once, we're not gonna get anything decided. Now, now wait a minute, wait a minute. We already decided. Three hours ago, everybody here was set to vote Terrence O'Toole guilty. Everybody excepting you. All right, and I'll be ready, too, as soon as we go over the evidence again. We've already done that. Oh, sure we have, piecemeal. Well, that's as good a way as any. We talked it all out. Right. Anybody that's made up their mind ain't gonna change it by going over the whole thing again. Maybe not, but there's a man sitting over in that jail cell waiting for us to decide whether he hangs or goes free. Now, if I was that man, I'd like to know that this jury was taking its time deciding. Now, we've already taken a lot of time. When I leave this room, whatever the verdict is, I want to be able to live with it. That's not too much. Let's go over it one more time.
Give me another drink. Ain't you had enough? You ought to be over at the courthouse with your mother. She needs someone to stand. Stepmother. Nevertheless, she needs someone to stand by her at a time like this. You know more than me than a housekeeper. Anyway, who asked you to poke your big nose in my business? I get another drink or not? Hi, Sam. Beer. He's been drinking like that ever since the jury started deliberating. Yeah. Well, it's sort of a hard time for old Jeff. Losing his paw like that, and his trial dragging on. It's taking that jury for dang long, anyway. <laughs> I swore in a Bible I saw two will kill my paw, and I, they just string him up. Jury's in! All right, O'Toole, the court's ready for you. The hour of judgment is at hand, is it? That's right. I welcome it, then. Got a verdict? Oh, we got one, Your Honor. Well, what is it? What is it? We say guilty. Got anything to say before the sentence in? Well, perhaps a few words that do no harm. I'll not take long. Well, get on with it. Tis uh, many a land I visited since leaving the old country, Your Honor. Half of them are the devil's own, let me tell you. With no democratic processes of laws you have here. I commend you, sir, and the prosecutor, and the jury as well. It is a fair trial I've had. I'm that grateful you'll be hearing no word from me against it. But though these good people have deliberated fairly and have rendered their verdict, by the Almighty, they've made an error. Terence O'Toole has been falsely accused wrongly condemned. I stand innocent of these charges. I've said my piece, Your Honor. I thank you kindly for the privilege. The jury has found you guilty of robbing Fred Dimmer of $400 and shooting him down in cold blood. I sentence you to hang by your neck until dead. <laughs> Sheriff, you have a job to deliver this man to the U.S. Marshal at Carson City tomorrow. The hanging will take place there. All right, Your Honor. All right, O'Toole.
That's all. Justice was done. Yes, I'm thinking it was. Joe, you sure missed some good apple pie tonight. Old Pop Singh almost outdid himself. Yeah, I bet. Paul wants us to do some work on that barn roof tomorrow. You want to haul the shingles out tonight? I can wait till tomorrow, can't I? Yeah, reckon so. You're still bothered by that verdict, ain't you? What if I am? Just ask it. I think you ought to talk to little Joe. What's the matter? Well, he's worked himself up a real fret. Yeah, I noticed it at supper. The trial really has got him worried, huh? Yeah. Yeah, he's taken a mighty big load on his shoulders. Well, I'll talk to him. See if you can make sense out of these figures, will you? Yes, sir. Some more coffee? Oh, a little while. Ah, oh, that trial sure upset everybody scheduled, didn't it? That's all folks talked about. Well, I guess the town will get back to normal now that it's over. Yeah, sure. Everybody will be happy now. Tool will hang and justice will be served. You don't seem to think so, do you? Oh, I should think so. I went over the evidence twice. I made it... I made all the jurors do the same thing. I wanted... I wanted to be sure. You brought in a verdict, Joe. Yeah, we brought in a verdict. The evidence was there. Tool saw Dimmer take the money out of the bank, the $400. He saw it. Dimmer's wife stay in town to shop. Figured he'd be out of the ranch alone. He followed him out there, but he wasn't alone. Jeb was there, saw the shooting. A little while later, the sheriff catches O'Toole, and he's got about $400 on him. It all fits. Did you believe O'Toole's story about earning that money for passage back to Ireland? No. No, I don't believe that. The, the only question was, what happened to the billfold? And the first thing you got to figure is O'Toole threw it away. What's troubling you, Joe? I don't know. Not the evidence. Just the way O'Toole looked at me. We brought in the verdict. The way he stood up there and looked every single one of us right in the eye. Said we made a mistake. I just can't believe that a man could look at you that way and still be guilty. Joe, you made a decision. And I doubt that there's a man alive who 
who's never had a second thought about any decision he's made. But you were asked to do a job, to serve on a jury. And you accepted that responsibility, and you did your job conscientiously, intelligently. And that's all the law asks for. You did your job well. Breakfast is on the table. Morning, Bob. Morning, Joe. Listen, I wanted to ask you if uh, maybe I could go to work on that roof this afternoon sometime. Why, do you have something more important to do? Well, there's something I have to do, yeah. What? Well, it's, it's just some person I want to take care of in town. Well, look, Paul, I can start that roofing by myself when Joe gets back. Uh, would you? Yeah. Good, okay, I'll be back. Well, wait a minute, have something to eat before you go. Uh, no, thanks, Paul, I'm not hungry this morning. Well, you'll be back for an early lunch, you hear? Right, I will. I'll be back by noon, I promise you. Joe. Hi, Roy. I want to ask a favor of you. Well, I hope it's something that I can do for you now. I'm leaving for Carson City with Mr. O'Toole for long. Well, I wonder if I could go in and talk to O'Toole for a minute. You go right ahead, but don't take too long. Better leave your gun right here, too. Right. My name is Cartwright. I was on the jury. Yes, I know. All of your faces are mounted like portraits on the walls of my soul. That little act you put on in court yesterday came kind of late, didn't it? Would it have uh, made a difference to you before the deliberations? Well, all the evidence was against you. It just couldn't understand why you bothered denying it. Would you have had me admit to murder then? Well, why not? It's not going to make any difference now. So you've uh, come to your confession, have you? Just the condemned man's immortal spirit that concerns you. You've uh, come to offer God's grace, perhaps, to help purge my soul of sin before the eternal sleep? No, that's not why I came. I... Then I misunderstood you, sir. All the while I was supposing it was for an admission of my guilt you came. Here I was supposing that you sought assurance you'd sent the proper man to the gallows. But you see, Mr. Cartwright, I stole no man's cash, and I'm innocent of murder. So I'll not be administering that balm to your conscience, badly in need of it as you'll continue to be. for me, will you? Hi, Sam. Joe. Let me have a beer, huh? Sure, Joe. Thanks, Sam. The fellows are playing for pretty high stakes, aren't they? Yeah. They ain't small-time gamblers, Joe. What's Jeb Dimmer's doing in a game like that? I don't know. 
but he's been at it since yesterday after the trial on and off. How's he doing? Heavy loser. But he keeps coming back with more money. How about a drink? I could use one. Give me a beer, will you? Gave you a pretty bad time over there, huh? I want it back. Well, here's that verdict you turned in. And a good hanging. Pretty anxious for that hanging, aren't you? <laughs> well, you were on the jury. That, that was the verdict, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. How much money do you say you lost over there? Why, are you backing somebody? No, I just didn't figure you for that kind of stakes, that's all. Well, maybe you better explain what you meant by that. I'm not going to explain anything to you. Tool. Is it your plan to leave soon, Sheriff? Well, we got to be over in Carson City early this afternoon. Marshal will be waiting then? Yeah, the Marshal and the, uh, the other official. Yeah, I was meaning him, too. You better eat up. It's a three-hour ride over there. It is not the pangs of hunger I was concerning myself with, Sheriff. Will you suit yourself? We'll be through this job in about an hour, Paul. Oh, I wasn't worried about that. Little Joe said he'd be back by noon. You ain't worried about him, are you? No, I'm not worried about anything happening to him. It's just that I'm wondering why he went into town. He wouldn't say. <laughs> well, I just got to remind myself over and over again that I've got grown sons, and they have grown up problems which they have to solve by themselves. That's right. <laughs> Like that roof. Yeah, well, I'll get on that right now. Now, come on, everybody, let's go to the house, get something cold to drink. Hmm? Good idea. Come on, Jake. Mrs. Dimmer. Good day. Mrs. Dimmer, I'm Joe Cartwright. I sat in on the murder jury. Yes, I know that, surely. Well, I'm sorry to come out here and bother you like this, but well, I just wonder if there was anything else you could tell us, anything that didn't come out at the trial. It's my not knowing anything that kept me from testifying. Yeah, I know. There's nothing else you can add. What would I be knowing? Shopping like I was in town when Fred was killed. Well, there's a man about to be hanged for murder. I just wanted to be sure he was the right one. Sure, anybody can look in his face and see he's the right one. And weren't you given better reason at the trial? Weren't you yourself one of them that said Terence was guilty? Terence? 
It was Terence O'Toole I was meaning to say. There's many a chore here to be done before, Doc. I'll thank you to be leaving me about my work. Mrs. Dimmer, you know Jeb has been gambling pretty heavy in town the last few days. I'll not be a party to your prying. Leave the matter be as it stands, why don't you? What did he want? It wasn't much he asked, and I had little enough to tell. Well, I don't want that cart right around anymore, you hear? Do you suppose he came on my invitation? Well, you just make it plain to him the next time he comes snooping around and he ain't welcome. I'm thinking it's for you to tell him that. You do like I say, if you want to go on keeping house around here. Are you thinking the ranch will tend to itself while you're off in town gambling? Is that what Cartwright came to tell you? And how is it you have the means to gamble? I'm remembering you hadn't the money, and there wasn't a cent of ready cash in the bank. Fred took it all out to make payment on those cattle he fancied. It ain't none of your affair where I get my money. It could set people to wondering. What people? It could set people to wondering how a young man with his pockets empty suddenly acquired sufficient to gamble after his pa was laid in the grave. Caught right? Is that who's wondering? It could set people to thinking that maybe everything that should have come out in the trial didn't. Well, now, I know something that didn't come out in the trial, Molly. Something else that might start people to thinking. You see, I saw you with O'Toole the day before my pa was shot. He was an acquaintance of mine from Dublin, many years before, recognizing me in town. And that's all there was to that. Well, I seen you, Molly. Seen you right out, right out here in the pasture. Talking. Talking like lovers. Like maybe all you could want is to get shed of your husband. Seeing me in town, he rode out to pay his respects. But I barely recollected him, and that's all there was to it. Think anybody's gonna believe that? Little good it'll do them not to. See, I could, I could do things with that information, Molly. Then in heaven's name, do it, and the devil take you. I could talk up to the sheriff. I could tell him what I seen. What is it you're insinuating? That it was me plotted Fred's death with Terence? No, I didn't insinuate that, Molly. You just kind of set the thought in my head. <sighs> Looks like maybe you better quit making such a big to-do over where I get my money. Then maybe I'll forget I saw you and your friend.
All right, O'Toole, it's time to go. O'Toole, I said we're leaving. By the almighty sheriff, I didn't hear you. I was that far lost in the fancies of the past. Sorry, Sheriff. I didn't mean anything of a personal nature. Hey, Sam, the Sheriff and O'Toole leave for Carson City already? O'Toole broke out. Sheriff's got a posse out to hunt him down. O'Toole's not going to get very far. Wouldn't surprise me if one of them posse boys didn't save the Sheriff a long ride back to Carson City. Ain't much fun hunting a man down this kind of heat. Yeah, and they're hunting down the wrong man. Huh? By the almighty Molly girl, are you alone? I no place else in the world to come save this one, Molly. It's me that are out hunting like the hounds after a fox. I'd not come troubling you, you understand, but I'm hurt too bad to go on. Can you help me? Don't you hear me, girl? I have need of you. I had need of you once, too. 
It was just 21 years ago next month that I waited at the church for a Dublin lad who failed to come. It was a base deed I committed that day. It was for you I'd done it. For your sake alone, I didn't come. For me, was it? You'd have made a poor match for yourself, Molly. You were last one in a house and, and little ones. And me with the wanderlust deep in my bones. I was that believing I waited all night in my white gown and veil. The pity of my friends. Oh, I had a need of you. Did you not hear my heart crying out to you? My own heart answered it, Molly. Many's the night I'd be sitting in some divil cursed waterfront saloon, weeping bitter tears at the memory of her I gave up. And many's the night I've wished you dead. Sure, you had reason to wish me in the grave. But now, knowing why your groom never came, and the torment he suffered for it, perhaps now your pity wouldn't be amiss. You have a queer way of reasoning it out, don't you? I couldn't go off to die without telling you why I deserted you long ago. Tell the truth, Molly. Doesn't your heart soften a bit to me now? Seeing all this pain and suffering I'm in? No, I never had a hate in me for any man. Leastways, not for you, Terence. It was the hurt of you going off. It was the pain of losing you that set the stone in my heart. Almighty bless you, Molly. I, I know that. Will you help me now? Will you be tending my wound, Molly girl, so I can make good my escape before those baying dogs get the little fox in their teeth? says I'm not to be receiving you anymore. Mrs. Demeter, does this billfold belong to your husband? Yes, it was Fred Shirley. See, his initials on it. But how is it you've come by it? Jeb had it. Sure then, Jeb lied. It wasn't Terence who killed Fred. Mind if I talk to him? It's the billfold he found. It's the proof you'll be needing you're an innocent man. Where did you get that? Jeb had it. Saw him throw it in the brush about a mile away from here. You can forget that trip to Carson City. There's not going to be a hanging. They'll be reopening the case now. It's just a matter of time before you'll be a free man. I'd not count on that, Molly. What are you saying? I'd not be trusting the mood of a posse. Hanging a man first and asking the questions after. No, I'll have no more of posses and juries. Better to be riding back to the East and book passage for Ireland. O'Toole, that doesn't make sense. You try to get away from here, they'll have every lawman in the West on your tail. All right, I'll go with you. Would you give me a moment to say goodbye to Molly first? Sure. I'll be right outside. When I get back to Ireland, I'll be sending for you. Will you? We'll be a lass and a lad in love again. And the years falling away. We'll be wed in the same church. Be invited to the same friends. So it'll be like I dreamed it a thousand nights since, in time, not a minute older. I'm wishing it could be that way again. But who can say nay to the years? 
The young, fair Irish maiden is long gone, you see. I'm thinking it's of someone else you've dreamed, not the widow Dimmer. And woe to those years, and to them that still dream. Better not to have crossed the American continent. Better never to have chanced upon Molly McGregor on the streets of Virginia City. Better not to have known what that man had done to you. A man that set you down in the wilderness to struggle with barren soil, to carry the slop of pigs. An evil man who took away your youth and wore down your beauty till what remained was, was flayed and lacerated. I couldn't let a man like that go on living without paying for his sins. That it was you after all, not Jeb. I... It was me. Oh, Molly. You were the star of beauty. All my life, I carried the image of you in my mind and heart. And when we met that day in Virginia City, my heart stopped. It was all there in your face and your eyes what he'd done to you. That brutal beast of a man destroying the beauty of your shining eyes. And then, to see him strike you there in the street. Blast his eyes. He deserved more than death. You were always in my heart, Terence. Always. It didn't matter what he did. Even when the work was brutal hard, and the days longer than I could bear, and when he wouldn't buy food or a piece of cloth for a new dress. Always, through it all, somewhere inside of me, my heart sang, you're young, fair Molly, and someday your lover will be coming back, and his heart will be singing too. Bless you, Molly. In all eternity, I'll not forget you. Posse's coming. Better let me have that gun. I won't be going with you. I'm afraid you're mistaken. I didn't steal, but I did kill him. We can still get away. I'll be pretending I'm your hostage. You wouldn't stand a chance out there. You'll be a fugitive for the rest of your life. Alone, I would. Well, Molly. I never stopped loving you. Fine, ma'am. He, he must have known we'd shoot back. It was to spare me the lot of a fugitive's woman that he done it. He was thinking it was that or his life. It was me. It was his last thought. You see, he always loved me. Always.
But you did see O'Toole shoot your paw and then run off. Now, that part is the truth, ain't it? Well, when I come up to him and saw he was dead, I... All I could think of is he's gonna leave that ranch to Molly. Because he never gave me nothing while he was alive. So I figured I'd at least ought to have the money. So I just took the billfold with the $400 in it and figured they'd blame it on O'Toole. But it was me, and I stole it. I took it. It's hard to believe that I could have been so wrong about him. I guess I better learn to take everything with a grain of salt from now on. Mm. Well, Joe, I'll tell you, I think it's much better to keep on looking for the good in a man. Finding yourself wrong than to be looking for the evil in a man and finding yourself cynical. Hell, I did a lot of good looking for the good in this man. Well, it's another way of looking at it. Suppose you'd been right. You'd have saved a man from hanging. Don't let it sour you the first time you believe in a person and find that you're wrong. Next time you may be right. Come on. Yeah, where are we going? Well, I'm not going anywhere. You'll be out to help Hoss finish fixing the roof. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, Joe. Before you go, there's something I want you to know. I'm proud of you. Entwine. Whispers of love like a sweet red wine Underneath the stars we dance so slow A melody of passion only we know Your eyes they speak a silent embrace Lost in this moment, a time and space Hand in hand through life's grand scheme All of a melody like a beautiful dream i 